I acknowledge the traditional owners and custodians of the stolen land on which this video was recorded and edited on, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. I extend that respect to the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia. I also pay respect to the elders both past, present and emerging. Sovereignty was never ceded. Always was, always will be Aboriginal land. But to say that I was not heave sobbing is that in my kitchen. <laughs> It's a bright and beautiful day. Let's go. How's everyone's day going? I feel like it's a little bit fun to chat and drive. I've never done it before, but I'm just assuming it looks kind of fun. I'm very excited to get my groceries. We're going to Woolies, purely out of convenience because it's right near me. As you've seen, I've been cleaning. I have a few videos that I'd like to film, particularly my Chain of Thorns wrap up clip. I read it ages ago and I read out like notes of things that I wanted to say and I also want to film a winter reading wrap up. I really would love to edit and uh, upload the Chain of Thorns vlog today which could be nice but you know. I may be pulling a cheeky little ADHD girly move where I <laughs> write out all these things that I want to get done today and then don't actually cater for how much time I have. And it's Father's Day in Australia tomorrow. So I crocheted earlier, I showed you, we call them stubby holders, and I think you guys call them cozies. I don't know what you call them in the UK, maybe cozies as well. But yeah, I crocheted a stubby holder for my pop for Father's Day. I still need to vacuum, put the washing out, put the washing away. Today is the second day of spring, and I noticed today that the trees on my balcony have started to bloom because they're like seasonal trees. It just makes me so happy, honestly. We're here. There's something so fun about seeing somebody else driving, I feel like. I feel like it's kind of poetic in a way. Like you don't see people focusing on a task for so long. Like you don't usually watch people do that. So currently I am reading Intuitive Eating, the fourth edition. I'll put the author here because I can't think of it right now. And it's really good so far. It's really good. My dietitian recommended it to me. And I know what you're thinking. Abby, you have a dietitian, but you don't 
subscribe to Diet Control? And I'd say, you're right, bestie. My dietitian is anti-diet and is educated on eating disorders and how the diet world affects eating disorders. So I'm listening to that on audio, which I'm pretty sure it's also free on audio if you're interested. I am physically reading Sister Outsider by Audrey Lord, which I will be doing a reading vlog on for an upcoming video. But have a look out for that if you're interested. It's very, very good so far. I started listening to it on audio, but I kept getting lost and I felt like I'd just take it in more if I read it physically. So I started to annotate it and I'm having a really nice time with it. I really love her writing. I just started watching uh, Conversations with Friends. I read the book recently, gave it five stars, which is honestly surprising. I was not expecting to love it so much. I have a lot of things to say about it. I think I'll talk about it in the winter wrap up that I'm filming today. So I'm currently watching the TV show on Amazon Prime. I'm not sure about it. I really love the casting. It's beautifully shot, like cinematic. However, I feel like it loses a lot of its charm without her in a monologue. I do wonder why they did do a voiceover though. But yeah, I mean, I'm excited to keep watching it. Chain of Thorns last clip and the winter wrap up. I will show you my little setup that I have going on. I wanted just like a little cozy setup. So I decided to film in front of my window and it's beautiful, beautiful lighting. And also a cozy cutie underneath here. I'm going to now wash my feet. I know that sounds really weird. <laughs> But I did a foot mask the other day, the one that like peels your feet, and it says to wash your feet after 48 hours. So I'm gonna do that. And I'm also gonna use the moon water that I collected last night from the full moon in Pisces because Pisces is ruled by the feet. So I feel like it's like great energy to cleanse my feet and make steps to move forward in the right direction. But I also have to get ready to go to cabaret tonight. I really have to go so I can catch my bus, but this is the outfit. I've gone for like some browns and my little lovely butterfly necklace. Got myself a little sippy sippy treat. She's a bad person because of all of the things that she's done. And the ending, while it really shocked me to hear about Monique and her father and all of that, obviously Monique is going to hate her. But still, as a reader, it doesn't make her a bad person. I don't think that she's an evil person. But I think she's definitely done a lot of things that hurt a lot of people. What do you think? Why are you staring at me like this? No, no, I agree. Oh, you I agree. With yeah. This? Okay. But I think when I read it, I, I really hated Evelyn at the oh, end. Oh, really? really? Yeah. I didn't. I mean, I knew it was complex, but I also felt like, how could you do that? Do what? Leave him there. Oh, totally. Honestly, as soon as that was happening in the book, I was like, Georgia. Like, she just reminded me of her. And it just <laughs> From reminded... Jimmy and Georgia. Yeah, but you know there. what? You know what? She did make a lot of bad decisions in her life because of what she wanted to protect 
and she wanted to protect all of the wrong things. Mm. She should have wanted to protect the people in her life rather than mm. her fame and her reputation. Yes, and, true. And, you know, her salary and, and her true, future. Yeah. It's interesting. There's a lot of criticism about the book that people say, like, as a POC person. This white author has used POC so flippantly and not really, like, like mentions it once and then doesn't really make it part of her identity. Kind of like a bit of tokenism. Like, she uses Monique's dad as, like, a scapegoat. She does. And, like, the she ethics does. of that surrounding, like, racism. But, like, as a story. Like, criticism on the story, not the characters. And criticism <coughs> on, like, Taylor Jenkins' read. So I think it's interesting. It is totally interesting. I just feel sad, though. Yeah. Like, feel that for all of them. Really it's horrible so, It feels so real, right? It's a really horrible ending. It's really brutal. What did you think when her love interest was first introduced? Did you know? Yeah. Totally. Remember I said to you, totally. you'll know when it happens. Totally. Happened. You will know. Totally. Well, you know what? Not for the first little bit because she starts off hating her and seeing her as competition. So I was like, ugh, this is like so toxic. Are we going to really do this? But then the way that it developed and when she started to like be like, oh, I, I respect her and I, I'm quite interested in her. And then they had that little conversation at like the cafe. And they had yes. um, the cafe where she took her there, and then she was like, "Look, I want to be your friend, and this is the type of girl that I want to yeah. be in this industry, and whatever you say, like blah blah." blah. What's her name again? Cecilia Saint James. James, beautiful queen, R.I.P. Yeah, moment of silence for her. Lesbian icon. It's a really sad ending to her story. Yeah horrible but really really happy they got to live together in this beautiful european country for a little bit and she got I to know, pass it wasn't that so with nice. her but to say that i was not heave sobbing is that in what my kitchen Please. as she's talking about blacking out as the people rip her lover's arms from her body Oh, I don't even remember that. I've blocked it's, it out. She's so she's so detailed with everyone's death. And and the way that the book goes, it's like fucking Harry's partner dies, Jonathan dies, oh, and then horrible. Cecilia dies, and then Harry it's dies, horrible. and then Harry's new love interest dies, who he feels like he's gonna finally love again in life after being a gay person ripped everything from you. And Crazy. then dies. Yeah, it literally just goes placebo with fucking people die. Placebo. No, like, <laughs> like, what is it? Like, <laughs> it's like next up, next up, next up. It's literally, no, it literally went Jonathan, Cecilia, and then Harry, it wasn't Harry's new love interest, Monique's, Monique's father, father. Yeah, he was a black man. As a POC person, to say that that part of the story was the least like surprising part of the book really was. And just in the sense that it's like it happens a lot. Especially white women, I think especially after I watched this documentary, they just they made a compilation of how white women have been killing oh, yes. the black community over years and even till like today, which Karen's just like harassing men in like neighborhoods yeah. and getting them arrested. People critique Taylor Jenkins read because she didn't realise the historical connotation of putting that in her book. Yeah. But also it's hard because Evelyn's not white. But I think she, but didn't she write kind about of it is. Well. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. She didn't, she didn't handle no, that well. Yeah, she did. But were you surprised when you found out that that was Monique's dad? Like, or did you predict that? No, I think I was surprised. I was like, when did I see that coming? Yeah. Mm. And then I was just like, what are we, like, how are we going to hate you? All of your fucking people are dead. I pity you, babe. I was literally sobbing for her. And then next minute she's like, I killed your daddy. <laughs> and, and he was gay as fuck. Please. In love with my best yeah. friend. Like, no, literally, and the, literally, and the moral implications of like her getting all of this money from this book. And you know what? Monique had points. Like she used her and made her sit through listening to this entire story that so she could control the narrative of how she was perceived. Mm -hmm. She's a deeply flawed woman, deeply fucked up. And then, and then on the other hand, she gets all this money from this this story that nobody else has gotten. I know, and it's meant to be like like replaced for something. This money is meant to be like... Yeah, I mean, it's a start, I think, maybe in her eyes, in Evelyn's eyes. Yeah. I think it also can be, like, white people, just, like, money. No, yeah, 100% agree. And that's why agree. it's kind of shallow and no, it's, like... No, 100% agree. That's, that's and the, the point. And then she committed suicide, like, that night. Like, oh, that's what she's doing. Oh, oh. It's 
So what did you rate them? <coughs> five. 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 No, it's a really great read. Okay, five. I don't know. Like, I'm very easily pleased, but I hated it <laughs> at the same time. But I loved it, if that makes sense. Yes. I, I feel like that's a good I feel like that's how I And let me buy your friendly help this fall, which I will overpay and pay again. When I have found it, the count, he woos your daughter. <laughs> Why don't you take one? delicious delicious slow shower my last little task that i wanted to do as part of this vlog is create a immediate tbr shelf on my bookshelf i wanted to like come to my shelf and like feel inspired to pick up a really highly anticipated book that i've been wanting to read and not get drowned in so many of the titles that i have here so i thought i'd pick out a few books that i want to put on it and then do some rearranging and have it like be eye level so i can like come into my shelf pick out of like this section obviously i'm not going to limit myself to the section just to keep me inspired you know keep me keep my juices flowing so I wanted to read this this year and we now only have four months left of this month of this year goodness maybe i should do a video on books i still want to read this year i think this is a good start so i think my plan is to move all of my journals down to the bottom of the shelf hi baby girl <laughs> You're so sweet. Done. It's really beautiful. And like unintentionally like a beautiful color palette like the oranges, the reds, the gold, the like touch of blue. I really love it. Honestly, it makes me feel really inspired. So now I'm just gonna fix up these shelves. this out because I wanted to read one every morning. So on my immediate TBR, we have The Prayer of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. If you don't know about The Prayer of the Orange Tree, it is a sapphic story with dragons. It's high fantasy. It's right up my alley. Then we have Babel Babel by RF Kuang. If you have heard of RF Kuang, she also wrote The Poppy War. And she also just came out with 
a new book that I will show you in a second. But Babel is a fantasy novel set in Oxford University and it delves into topics of translation and I think it's found family and it just sounds so good and the writing is so good. I did start it but wasn't in the mood for high fantasy. Yeah, if you're ready to like delve into something like that, definitely check out Babel. The next one is Fourth Wing, a little bit of a lighter fantasy series I've heard, but Chronic Illness Rep apparently. Also dragons. Clearly I have a thing for dragons. My friend Kitty recommended it to me. It's also quite popular right now and it's very, very good. So I'm really excited to pick that one up. Diary of Blood. It is polyamorous vampires, I'm pretty sure. Sounds really amazing. I'm so excited to pick that up as well. Ace is uh, What Asexuality Reveals About Desire, Society, and the Meaning of Sex by Angela Chen. I have been putting off reading this. I am slightly worried about what truths it's going to bring up for me. Being under the asexual umbrella, which I have suspected for a little bit. But yeah, a little bit terrifying. What is going on? What did you just do? Anyway, <laughs> then we have Hood Feminism by Mickey Kendall. I am so excited about this book. It's a really beautiful cover as well. Notes from The Woman That A Movement Forgot. It's such an important read and I'm so disappointed that I haven't read it yet. So that's the reason why it's on this shelf. Be Not Afraid of Love by Mimi Xu. I went to her book talk all earlier this year. It's so disappointing that I have not read this yet. I'm so excited to read it. It is Lessons on Fear, Intimacy and Connection. Um, and it just looks really good. I think it's an anthology of like selected poems and short stories and at the talk she really inspired me and moved me and I can't wait to pick that one up. Dark Emu I actually recently bought this week actually by Bruce Husco. It is a highly anticipated book of mine. It's been on my TBR for a while and I'm so glad to have it in my hands. So I think it's commentary on the claim that a lot of colonizers in Australia say if the British never colonized Australia then you'd still be living in huts. All of that racist shit challenges that and looks into the agricultural and the culture of Aboriginal people and how it was quite a Advanced, and I'm so excited to really find out about it. Then we have Audrey Lord Zami, a new spelling of my name, a biomythography. So it's a combination of a biography and myth. I am reading it as part of my Audrey Lord Feminist Oracles deck series. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this one, check out that video when it comes out. I highly recommend Audrey Lord. She's a great, great writer. I'm currently reading one of her other books at the moment. The other one is Unfuck Your Habitat by Rachel Hoffman. My friend Amilla recommended this to me to help with managing housekeeping, organizational systems, etc. It's something I wanted to do for the springtime. It's quite good energetically at this time to be doing that kind of thing so i thought i'd put it on there i feel bad because she gave this to me ages ago so i really want to give this back to her and then we have women in power a manifesto updated by mary beard sometimes like i come to my shelf and i just want to read something really small that's feminist themed and that i can like you know read in one sitting also the cover is quite fun so i fixed up this shelf and i put like my queer reads here i have a lot of them on audiobook and then these are like my feminist themed books and we have spirituality and my witchy themed book and then i also have some anti-racist books that i've just like tidied up and then this side is self-help books that i've like reorganized and rearranged and then I just tidied this shelf and then I also tidied this shelf and then I also just started like a little tiny literary fiction section. Yellow Face, this is the new book by Rebecca F. Corn. Honestly, they could also go on my anticipated read shelf, but I will be here forever if I do that. So yeah. Oh, the movie's coming out literally so soon. I need to read this so bad. So I put the songbirds of the ballad of songbirds and snakes by Suzanne Collins on there. If you don't know what that is, it's a prequel to the Hunger Games. I also got this book today. Simple Abundance, a day book of comfort and joy by Sarah Ben Breathmatch. I got it like a secondhand bookstore. Yeah, you just like read one little excerpt per day and it's just so beautiful and fun. And I can't wait to start it next year. Okay, so I just fix it up and put it there. That's it for this vlog. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this fun little day that I had. Be kind to yourself today. If you don't feel like you haven't gotten anything done, that doesn't mean you don't deserve kindness and love. Treat yourself with maybe like a crazy tea. Sending you all lots of love and peace. And I hope you're having a lovely, lovely time with it. Good night. Bye.